Hello everybody, welcome to answering your achieving questions video. In this video, I'm going to answer uh, around 21 different questions that are, uh, uh, that has been asked so many times uh, by many of you and I couldn't answer them through comments or Facebook comments or YouTube comments and uh, because I either have the, uh, didn't have the time or I wanted to, I thought that it's good to, the reason why I make this YouTube channel is to give my time, the same time, not to help one person, but help as many uh, people as possible. And I thought, uh, because I, if I answer each question, it, it takes a lot of uh, my time and recording the videos and everything. So I am now answering most of the questions online one by one and this is going to help everybody get the answers to these questions so let's dive deep into this question uh, the first question should we come back to our uh, countries after our program ends this has been the question for uh, many of you uh, yes you should come back to your country uh, at least for two years you enter into a contract with the Chivening uh, program and also partially, let's say, with the Chivening government uh, because Chivening Scholarship is a public uh, like organization and you enter into uh, with the government to uh, study for one year and get all the benefits of the scholarship and then return to your country at least for two years so that you are able to contribute back to your country. The reason for this scholarship is not to support you only individually, but also support your community, your country and your people uh, from where you come from. So you should definitely return back to your country. Well, there are some people uh, that they get a scholarship to study another uh, degree or they can find work, internship, uh, like they have families to join them, anything. There might be some ways, it's not like a hundred percent concrete word that you uh, are not allowed to live in the country for, uh, for like after your uh, program ends. If you find a work, normally the, uh, when you want to get a work visa, um, the government wants to, uh, you know, see your background and they want to check where did you come from. And how did you, uh, you know, got your uh, were, uh, LLM, um, master's degree in the UK? They will definitely see that, okay, you came here through achieving a scholarship program because they want to know your uh, sponsor. You have two sponsors uh, when you study through achieving. One is your university that sponsors your visa and achieving sponsors your funding. So they want to know both of them and when if they see that you entered into an agreement with the Shivening that you will return back to your country for two years, you won't be able to get a, a working visa, uh, unfortunately. The same thing with the internships and, uh, and uh, like full-time work or anything. But there are some possibilities that if you are here on a family reunion issue or if you are married, with people uh, who are living or like UK permanent residents. Uh, and then the situation is different because you know, it's family issues are more important than just entering into an agreement with the Chief English Scholarship. So I cannot tell you that yes, you can definitely stay. And I can also not tell you that uh, uh, no, you, you, you cannot stay. So there are some legal ways, but I highly encourage you if you want to stay, try to stay within the within the framework of uh, in the, within a legal framework so the answer is uh, yes and no but i highly encourage you once you apply once you come into the uk then you you know everything on daily basis you will start to learn about the situation your situation and everybody's situation is actually different second question i hope the first is clear is english language required for 2020 2020 uh, 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 or 21 or 22 sorry yes and no uh, yes it is required uh, not for the evening evening scholarship has waived this but the universities 
have not. Still, if you, uh, did, you don't have to submit any English uh, score for achieving, but if you want to apply for any of the universities, the universities, they have the same regulation. But there's a good thing. If, um, for example, if TOEFL or IELTS, they are closed, they are not working because of any reason, such as coronavirus, pandemic, uh, or anything, you have, uh, I believe, Duolingo. Duolingo test is uh, uh, online. The university will share the link for you. You can do it online. And there is only a $50 payment uh, for Duolingo test. Uh, it's, uh, it's very short compared to IELTS or TOEFL. And then um, off you go. Yes, to say it in a simple word, yes, you need English language. Don't even, what would be the reason of the English? Uh, why, should we, you, why should you be happy if there is no English language uh, in the Achieving Scholarship? So please prepare yourself and be ready. Yes, there is a language test that you need to take. Should I apply to universities or will the Achieving, uh, uh, Achieving do that? Is it a single complete portal? Some of you who are very new to Achieving Scholarship and Achieving Portal, uh, when, you go to, when you go to the section that talks about the universities, that you have to select three different universities or three universities, if you write name of three universities, don't think that the Achieving Scholarship will do the work for you. There is nobody who is going to apply on your behalf to any of the universities. Achieving Portal is not a complete portal that, you know, you just select the name of university, Cambridge University, and I want to study this field, this is it. And then they will do it and they will provide you everything. No, uh, please be careful in the Achieving you only select the universities that you are looking to study and then you go to each university, their website separately. If, if how you want to do it, I've made another video how to select your universities. Please look at that one. It is uploaded on 18th of September, that video. Uh, and then I will put the link also maybe in the description that how you can apply to three different universities. In the Achievement Portal, you just name them and then you go separately to each university's website. You create a portal and then you can fill your application. You, there's different questions, different documents required. Very similar to Achievement, but in a different platform. And you submit it to the separate universities and you will get an offer. And then you will upload the uh, unconditional offer or conditional offer in the Achievement Portal. This is how it is done. So please be careful by submitting your achieving application. It doesn't mean that you have also applied for those three different universities. Question four, should I apply to, uh, to different universities or one university with three courses? Uh, should I apply to different universities or one university with three courses? Achieving application says that you can, <coughs> excuse me, you have the right to choose uh, one university and three courses in the same university or you can choose uh, one field and three different universities this is another option so what I highly encourage you for example you uh, you apply to Cambridge University and uh, you just choose in all fields Cambridge University but you apply three different fields in one university what would I look for pretend you are paying me, you are the Chevening Secretariat, and I apply to Cambridge University, but I choose three different fields, law, business law, I don't know, humanitarian law and uh, criminal law. And you are confused. What is my goal? What do I want to become in the future? Business lawyer, commercial, uh, um, criminal lawyer, or human rights lawyer? This is confusing and this is very bad. In my belief, maybe some other alumni, evening alumni will tell you this is good, but in my belief, I, uh, this is how I work. And I had seen more than a, a dozen um, group of people who had, uh, applied one university, three different subjects, and they were all rejected. I had never seen in my life one person selecting one university and three different subjects and when. Maybe they are hard, but I haven't seen. So I highly encourage you to choose three different universities, but the same field, the same course. I study, I choose international commercial law in three different universities, in Aberdeen, in Birmingham, in Durham, in Nottingham, and also in London School of Economics. 
uh, or London Noise School. This is how I did it. I applied to five different universities and I had five uh, unconditional offers from five different places. I applied to more than seven universities and some universities rejected me and some universities, you know, I got the offer and then I decided which universities are in my, you know, selection. That's why uh, what I highly encourage you. Number question five, what if I already have a master's degree in your own country and you want to apply to the second one? This is not a problem for the universities. Universities will be more than happy to uh, give you an unconditional offer. And the reason is because universities want to have, you know, intelligent students. But for achieving a scholarship, uh, there will be a question if you have one, one master's degree, why you want to apply for the next one. I highly encourage you to concentrate on a few things. The first thing, write in your CV and uh, explain what good things you have learned from uh, your first master degree and what are the things that you think are still missing in that um, uh, that, that master degree uh, so that you still feel that you lack uh, more knowledge that's why you want to learn them second issue I think is because your master degree would be in your own country something everybody you know goes on to take it you say the reason why you want to take chevening is because of it is you know international experience you are traveling to a new country UK which is famous with its uh, education system and you want to you know learn something different than compared to what you have learned in your own country so like your masters and your undergraduate degree they are very much the same scope the same you know limited area like in my country and more most of our countries but participating in achieving a scholarship or studying in the uk it's a totally another world and another experience and it should never uh, you know stop you from uh, you know that one master's degree in your own country which it just which is even devalued uh, by some of the universities in the UK, it should not stop you from your dream of having an international experience. I believe these two, you know, answers, if you um, demonstrate it in your CV and also in your interview, nobody is going to stop you and nobody will reject your uh, application because you had one master degree and you shouldn't continue. 3rd of November, what deadline is it and what kind of documents should be ready by that deadline? 3rd of November is the deadline for the Chevening obligation. You should submit your uh, 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 uh application in the portal. You should, uh, you know, finalize the three universities that you want to apply. Don't worry if you don't have uh, yet any unconditional offer or conditional offer from the universities. If any of those universities rejects you by that deadline, immediately go and change the name of the, that university to any other university that's either pending or you got a conditional offer. Even if you have a conditional offer, don't worry, that is enough. You don't know what's condition or unconditioned, I think it's in the questions and I will answer that. And what other documents, uh, other documents such as your university document, school document, your passport, your um, transcript, and all other necessary documents should be uploaded unless uh, if some documents are pending we will talk about that uh, later as well so by that deadline you should you know uh, you can still upload your recommendations later but you know i highly recommend you to by 3rd of november have your recommendations ready have your school and university transcript and diploma and certificates have your uh, you know essays and everything ready to submit have at least three conditional offers from the universities it doesn't matter if you don't have unconditional offer but still you have the chance to you know wait for your english score wait for your recommendation letters seven what is the gpa requirement for chevening gpa or a percentage requirement it's nothing uh, it's not important for chevening i haven't seen any of the, my friends or people i knew with bad grades during their university uh, that should that would be rejected because they had very low grades uh, during uh, their um, school year uh, i have uh, this is true that I have seen people who had bad grades, but they had good achievements, the good working experience, good profession, good background, many years of or plenty years of experience. They have won it. Yes, I had seen some of my friends who had poor um, grades and also poor volunteer work, poor profession, 
not a lot of experience and poor essay, they were rejected. It, it matters. And I have some friends who had perfect grades, but they didn't have good essays and they didn't have good career plan or goals. They were rejected too. So this GPA has nothing to do with the achieving. Yes, GPA has something to do with your universities. With a low GPA, you are not going to be able to get admission at Cambridge, London School of Economics and Law, Oxford and all other famous universities. Number eight, I don't understand 2.1 honors or 2.1. This is like a university degree with uh, four years of studies. Normally some countries like India, they have three years uh, undergraduate degree, which has problem. I don't know for the Indians in, the, in India, but for Afghans from my country who have been studying in India with three years uh, bachelor degree, and when they returned back to Afghanistan and applied for achieving, they were rejected because they said these three years is not accepted as a 2.1 honors. And uh, they should study one year program to, you know, complete the four year. And then we don't have any one year program that would be similar level as the bachelor degree. Then you have to get a master degree in order to be able to complete like five years to be able to apply to like the four year 2.1. So, uh, but it can, it's different in different countries. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, that in India, people can apply to achieving with three years. I don't know the, the uh, like the details. The most important details you can get is from the uh, British Council in your country or UK embassy in your country. Uh, you can either contact them physically or go to their website or Facebook, Twitter pages and find the details through uh, for the achieving scholarship program. Number nine, should everything I write in the essays be uh, on the CV as well? For example, you talk about your work experience, your volunteer work, your everything. I, I highly encourage you that uh, those things that fall into a profession, a work, and uh, uh, it should be there. But some things that you participated in a book club as a... Uh, uh, just reading book clubs, uh, books in that book book club, not being a volunteer member of that group, you cannot write it, of course, in your CV. But if you were a volunteer work, uh, volunteer employee uh, in that book club, small book club in your community, even if it was six people, five people there, but you were like the organizer, you were, you know, you were making a schedule for them, you were setting meetings or setting events. Yeah, definitely. It should be on your CV because it is counted as a work experience uh, as well. Number 10, I don't have certification for my volunteer work. What should I do? You don't have certificate because you work volunteer. Most of us, we don't have a certificate for our volunteer work. Oh, not most of us, but some of us. Yes. Don't worry about it. Talk about your volunteer work. And uh, if you are asked in any place to provide a document, a certificate, try to contact with the place where you used to work as a volunteer or you're working and at least ask them to provide you a recommendation later or a, a, a rec uh, recognition letter that, okay, this we recognize this person that has been working for us from this period to this period or as working from that period up to now currently working. So, uh, uh, but nobody will ask you to provide any document uh, for your experience uh, working as a volunteer or anything working anywhere. But I highly encourage you to have a document or something to be on the safe side, but it's not mandatory to have them. Number 11, can I write that I worked professionally and uh, also did volunteer work in my extra uh, free time? Yes, definitely. You know, we, if you think, uh, yeah, I have worked for some time, like for six months that I didn't have a job. I did volunteer work and I had no income. But of course we do volunteer work when, when we have a life, we have enough like financial stability. And then we think, okay, as a stable person, as a financially stable person, I should help my people. I should do volunteer work. That is the time that we normally do and we should do volunteer work because if I don't have a stable life, how can I help others? So I highly recommend you that if you have even little volunteer experience in your community, first of all, let's be honest, let's be good citizens, let's be good human beings. 
let's do volunteer work. I have been promoting volunteerism in my country and I'm so happy that we did a lot of work. So I highly encourage you to do volunteer work and get credit for your work that you do. Do your daily work, go to your job from eight to four or five and then after that time do some volunteer work during the night time or early mornings or during your work if you if you have the chance to do it and also on weekends you can do volunteer work and help the people and then you can talk about them how you have done this and it's very good because uh, you know you help your people you help your community and uh, it's worth it and it's also counted as a, uh, as a as a professional work or work experience in chiefing application Number 12, I was working and running a foundation like you, it was talking about me, but I was not the director like you. Should I write that or what should I write? I, I said before in the previous question that even if there was a book club of five people and you were organizing them, it is a very big achievement. You are a leader. It should be mentioned in your leadership essay. You are also, uh, it should be mentioned in your networking and it should also be added in your CV and it should also be added as a work experience in the achievement portal. This is it. You don't have to be the founder. You don't have to be the director like me. You don't have to be the deputy director of a center for your professional work. You know, we all start from small places. You know, uh, the first year I applied, I wasn't deputy director, but the second year I was. And there were many people my, like from my country and other countries that they are not directors of the centers to win this evening scholarship program. They are newly graduates, but maybe one year has passed since they graduated, but they have enough experience and they are applying it. So this is, you know, you should write any experience that you have. Number 13, does online work count and work experience part? Should we mention it in our essays? I cannot tell you yes and no, but um, yes, online work, as long as you are paid and you have a contract that you work from this time to this time, it should definitely be accepted as a work experience. The reason why I cannot honestly answer this question is because we were not used to online work before this uh, pandemic. So we don't know it. I really don't know it. But I, but I am, am, am honestly telling you that it should be counted and it's counted because the whole world were working online and of course you as well. Number 14, what if you have accomplished nothing and just studied in school and university and just but, but was a perfect student? This is good. Congratulations for being a perfect student. You always we always we all start from at, at some point that we are nothing as i said we start small we are in group of five people and ten hundred thousands uh, and that's how we grow uh, and don't be worried don't you know feel bad of being accomplishing nothing uh, but yes uh, what i tell you is to try to uh, first of all before applying try to uh, find what you have done sometimes we have done something but we don't see it for example, if you are part of a book club, if you are part of our community, a council, we normally help our villagers or our neighbors, but we don't know that this is a good thing. First, try to brainstorm and see that you have and you can find them. And even if you don't have anything, I highly encourage you to take part in volunteer work and social activities, find organizations, be involved with the people, always ask people what you can do for them. Don't ask people what you can do for me to give me experience to, you know, be a winner in the evening. So you always have to have an approach that, okay, what I can do for your social organization and one, uh, your community organization. Once you get in, then, you, you know, things start to shape itself and you will learn. If you have nothing, I highly encourage you to still work on your application, apply for the Achieving English Scholarship Program. If you don't win, which there might be a possibility that you won't be able to win, because not because you're bad, because you are not bad, but other competitors, other people from your country, your province, your village, are more qualified compared to you. That's why they are going to win this. So nobody's bad in chiefing. Everybody has something. And the reason why we don't, or some of you don't get, win chiefing or get rejected is not because you're bad. It's because some other people were better than you. That's the, that's the only difference. Uh, and they won it. They had maybe you have two years ex of experience. They have four years. Uh, you have, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, they have a better GPA with, with you, which doesn't, work very much but let's say they have some things better than you that's why they um, they can win it or even 
you are a honest person, you just say, well, I did this much achievements, uh, I haven't achieved so much things. But another person is a good public speaker. He writes good and in the interview, he shines, you know, he speaks so confident, he shows himself or she shows him herself very confident and she wins. Although you are both the same level, but some people have the talent to speak to very persuasively. So these things matter, that's why sometimes we, you know, some others, uh, you know, run as uh, in these kind of like competitions. Number 15, what if you did a normal everyday work and live a simple life with no specific accomplishments? Yes, this is common. Some of us, I have some relatives that they are, you know, he or she is 80 years old and they spend the whole life doing nothing. They just have a job. They were going morning and coming in the afternoon. They haven't been traveling. They haven't been volunteering. They haven't been, you know, in networks with the people. They haven't wrote anything. They haven't have any, they are not involved in politics. They are not involved in leadership, nothing. Well, unfortunately, some of us, a lot of the population in this earth we are living like that, which is, I don't say which is bad, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't want, I can't judge anybody, I shouldn't actually, but this is how a human being is. Some are active, some are introvert, some are extrovert. So if you have lived a simple life, as you said, and you don't have any accomplishment, I think everybody has a little small, tiny or big accomplishments. So first of all, I want to encourage you to have a paper and a pen and try to start from very early years. Like, what did you do at school? What did you do at your community? What, what was the big event in your life? Something happened, the pandemic happened and then, oh, I went to help my neighbors. I knocked on the doors and I, you know, I found the elderly people and I said, if you need to, me to bring you food or something, this is, I think, a great achievement. If, if I do some volunteer work at the time, it's not needed. It, this is, it should be appreciated, of course. But at the time of a pandemic where the world is in crisis and you go and knock on your neighbor's door and you offer them help, I think that is more valued than compared to me doing five years of volunteer work, honestly. So try to brainstorm. I'm pretty sure that there is nobody, uh, anybody who has written this to me uh, in the Facebook or YouTube as a comment, I am telling you, if you're, re if you're watching me now, you have done a lot of things. You have accomplished a lot of things. You haven't lived a simple life. I am pretty sure you are a very strong person, man or woman. So please think about it. Brainstorm. You will come up doing some great achievements. Reflect on it. Write it on your CV, as small as it might be. And I am pretty sure that that's going to count. If you haven't, pretend you don't have any accomplishment, not because you're an old person, but because you just graduated from uh, university or you are currently studying uh, your first year in bachelor degree and watching this video to prepare yourself for the future. Maybe in five years you want to apply for the evening. So I highly, highly, highly encourage you to take, leave some extra um, free time from your university studies, Facebook, YouTube, TV, anything, gaming, and do some volunteer work. Uh, I highly tell, uh, encourage you to participate in extracurricular activities in your university. There are clubs in the university, there are associations, uh, be involved in them. MUN club, speaking clubs, speech clubs, writing clubs, essay competitions, uh, mood court competitions, uh, I don't know, robotics competitions, anything. Get involved in them, volunteer work, cleaning the streets. Even if you are doing volunteer work for the municipality, cleaning the, the, you know, the river in your city, the ditches in your area, the road is dirty, the kindergarten is dirty, the school is dirty. You do a, you know, a, a cleaning, that is, that is work, that's more valued. We should never be ashamed of you know, cleaning our streets. That's what I had done in my social organization when I started like 10 years ago. So uh, I am pretty sure you have something. If you have nothing and you want to apply in the future, start from now. Number 16, does the studying in the UK reduces my chances of applying to achieving a scholarship program? Uh, I think the question is not clear, but the question means that because this person had studied in the UK some years ago, uh, or maybe last year, and now he or she wants to apply once again. Uh, is there a chances that his application will be rejected? 100% not at all. You are good to go and apply unless this scholarship was through Achieving Scholarship or the Commonwealth Scholarship Program or 
summer scholarship program related to this and it doesn't mean that you are not you know you cannot take it the eligibility doesn't tell you that if you have a scholarship or a previous scholarship you should not do it again no 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 go on give and be confident give your explanation in your essays in your application and also in your interview why you should get this scholarship and nothing should stop you Number 17, I work as an academic assistant. Does it count towards a leadership position or does Chivening look for has working in the social sector? I highly encourage and talk in my videos, all my videos you see I'm talking about volunteer work more than professional work at your um, country. I'm sorry for that. The reason is that I think for me, my volunteer work helped me a lot. Like 50% of my chances of winning the Chivening Scholarship has been volunteer work. That's why I am always talking about social and community volunteerism and these things. But uh, working in, as an academic assistant, uh, first of all, master degree is normally, in my belief, in my country, in uh, most of the people I knew, we think that master degree means that you are in more of an academic position that you are doing some you know writing work you are working as an academic assistant you have already that uh, you know you should get masters not me if i'm not teaching if i'm not in an academic environment that's the first thing does it count towards a leadership position well if you, it, in a way it does you know if you are for example teaching if you you uh, are leading a group of students you are also a good manager and you also have a network so you can put it in two or three essays the first essay is like leadership and influence you influence a group of people your colleagues and also these people and you also can put write it in your network because you have a network you have network with the academic institution that you work and also with the you know future maybe your students are going to be you know famous people in the future or high-ranking the people in the future so of course this is going to be a network uh, leadership and also you can write it in your career plan that you are going to be involved with these people in the future to accomplish something big for your country uh, question 18 I have written articles and I'm an undergraduate student should I mention my articles in the evening essays and does it help me first of all good luck uh, and congratulations on publishing articles be careful that there is a difference between writing application and publishing uh, 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 public publishing articles. I have twenty five art. I have written twenty five articles, honestly, but I have published only five of them. So if I tell anybody that I have written twenty five articles, I am lying. But technically, I'm true. Uh, I have written, not published. And nobody, nobody, nobody cares if you have written an article, but you have not published it. So be careful with that. Uh, I don't know if you have published it or not, but according with the literal meaning of your sentence, uh, it meant that you have only written. I hope you have published them as well. And you are an undergraduate student. You are undergraduate student. You have written articles. Good job. If they are published, then you are good to go. Should I mention them in evening essays? Definitely. You should talk about all your achievements. I said, as small as it might be. If you help five people in a book club, write it. So if you have written two articles and they are published, why not? But if they are written but they are not published, I am telling you, please do not write it in your evening essays. Because what? So you have written 100 articles and you kept it at home. Does it help anybody? No, it doesn't. So don't write it. And yeah, it's same for everybody. 19. What are the necessary documents that you should share to evening? I think I already explained. Passport, transcript, school transcript, university transcript, school certificate, diploma, school diploma or certificate you call it. Um, uh, recommendation letters that you need to prepare. Uh, your um, uh, I, national ID card if you need to do some verifications or other things. Translation of all these necessary documents if you don't have it. Two recommendations. I highly re encourage you to get recommendation from your university. The place where you work. If you don't work, you're a volunteer work. The uh, volunteer uh, that, that NGO or social organization, community organization, they work. Their recommendation is also valued. Uh, and yeah, this is it. English language that you have to prepare yourself for English language, a CV that you need to write, a mission statement that you have to prepare for this, and also the evening application as well. Number 20, what if I don't have my university certificate and I'm waiting to get them? 
that's fine. You can write in the achieving that you are uh, um, um, expected date of graduation is this much. And then once you put expected date of graduation, you don't have to provide any document. But you have to be careful that by the, uh, I think it's in March, by March or July, you really have to submit your um, your um, uh, university documents. The reason why I cannot concretely tell you is that some of the deadlines have changed because of the pandemic, so I'm not sure that's why I'm sorry for that. Number 21, and I think the last question, I don't have two years of work experience, what should I do? If you don't have two years of work experience, then, then it means that you are automatically rejected by submitting your application or even when you submit your application it, they, you will already you will get a notice that you are not qualified because you don't have two years of work experience so i am telling you if you have worked for example for one and a half year full-time job and then during one and a half year you also worked for volunteer work after your work and you can prove it add them as a volunteer work and write how many hours per week you have worked be careful that you can not lie to the system. For example, you say from 2018 to 2019, for two years you worked, or half of these two years, and then uh, you worked for uh, 40 hours per week, and then you say volunteer work the same dates, and then you work for eight, 40 hours again. So the system will detect you that you are lying. If the system, you can go through the system, then the people will check your uh, obligation and then at the same time you inserted your volunteer work and professional work and how can you work eight hours well definitely you can I uh, there were some times that I was working 18 hours 20 hours per day for like six months because we had projects to work on it yeah this is possible but how can you prove it to Chivening it's not easy you know to say that I worked 80 hours per week for two years or for one year to make it two year. It's very difficult. Uh, well, you can, if your system accepts you, you're good luck with this. Once you get into the interview, the interview panel will ask you questions that, you know, that's their job. They have been interviewing people maybe for 10 years and don't, and every year they have interviewed a hundred people. So in 10 years they have, you know, interviewed a thousand people. And do you think a person who has been doing this for 10 years, you can lie to them that you worked 80 hours per week? That's something you cannot do it. So I highly encourage you to prepare yourself. You have enough time. Don't apply this year. Apply next year and apply strong. Go do volunteer work. Write an article. Publish an article. Work in good positions. Do volunteer work. Work on your essay, make a very strong essay, and if you apply not this year, but this next year, I promise you, you will definitely have a seat in the Chevening Scholarship Program. So good luck with your uh, application. I hope I have answered as many questions as possible, and I hope this uh, answering to these questions has helped you so far. Uh, if you have more questions, please write it in the comments below this uh, channel. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. I am pretty sure that I uh, there are a lot of questions unanswered. I'm going to answer those questions in the future videos. Have a good day. Bye-bye.